Dr. Ray, you have decades of experience in the path of what we learn in a pandemic. Where are we in that sequence with COVID? Are we still newbies or are we actually really getting a handle on this unique virus? I think there's a huge range of, of statuses. Uh, we've come so far on vaccines and we've come uh, so far on getting the rates of infection and severity down. Uh, but we still have some headwinds, and we're learning a lot about how this virus is spread and what makes someone susceptible. Uh, so we've got a lot to learn, but I think it's amazing that we've come as far as we have in a year and a half. How do you respond to a baseball field of 40,000 seats that will have 15,000 people in them randomly this weekend, say this Friday evening? Are you comfortable with that? I am. I think that uh, we don't completely understand this, but open air is an amazingly protective thing. And uh, people still need to be careful about how they get to those seats and how they go from those seats and what they do in the corridors uh, between uh, the time that they're in those seats. But I think that that time in the seats is probably not the riskiest thing those people will do that day. Dr. Ray, let's talk about what's potentially riskier at a time when we're being advised that if we've gotten vaccinated, we don't have to wear our masks in most places. This is the ad advisement from the CDC. Is that accurate? Is that advisable given this data, given the science that you are studying? Well, I think it's important what you hear when you when those words are said, because what it's, what's being said is you don't have to. Uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't. And we have to think about the most vulnerable among us and what will help get rates low. Right now, we have pretty high rates of transmission still, uh, you know, similar to where we were a year ago. Uh, but we have more people who are immune. And uh, when people are immune, they're protected from severe disease. But there are people around them who may still be susceptible. And we still need to learn about how we protect those people. Well, Dr. Ray, can you clear up some misconceptions? Because frankly, I am not clear on just how infectious somebody who's been vaccinated is, should they contract the, the, the virus, even if perhaps they don't get very sick. What is the data? What is the epidemiological work showing on that front? Well, we know that people who've been vaccinated have a, a lower rate, much lower rate of getting sick. And when they get sick, uh, we see that they don't get severe disease or death. The problem is that we still get positive. So we're still seeing a substantial number of people who've been fully vaccinated uh, getting hospitalized. Uh, and those people still have positive tests. So we know that they can uh, harbor the virus. And we have some evidence that they can spread it. But it's a much lower rate than it was before they got vaccinated. Yesterday, Dr. Ray, in a New York City that is clearly becoming more buoyant, more visibly back to normal, I heard so much talk of fear of variants, and this is from people qualified and, frankly, too many people unqualified. Do you have a fear of variants? Well, my fear is, is more for the population than for the individual. I think that if you're fully vaccinated and your immune system is not impaired by medicines we give or other conditions you might have, then those variants really don't pose a great risk. So the vaccines are very effective against these variants in preventing severe disease. The problem is that these variants uh, raise the infectivity of the virus so much that the threshold, the herd immunity threshold we need, the number of people vaccinated or proportion of people vaccinated, we need to protect the population from uh, spreading of this virus is now higher. So the more infectious the, the virus, the more people we need to vaccinate to get to the point where we don't get kindling of an epidemic. And so now, instead of, you know, initially maybe 60 or 70 percent uh, threshold, we need more like 80, 90 percent of people to be vaccinated. And that makes it harder to get there, especially if there's hesitancy about it. Stuart, how do we know what the emerging dominant strain is if we have such limited sequencing in the U.S. compared to, say, the U.K.? Well, uh, it's true that the U.K. got ahead of us on this, but we've made a lot of uh, advances in this. And we're now sequencing more than 10 percent of all uh, positives in the state of Maryland. And I think many jurisdictions have done the same thing. So we've ramped up that capacity. We have a pretty good idea of what's going on. Now, right now, what's happening is that the B117 variant that was first identified in Kent in the UK is now the dominant strain with like 80 percent of infections uh, uh, being caused by that one. But we now see the rise of some other variants as well. And so we have to keep an eye on that. We need to make sure the molecular epidemiology is happening.